right, introduce yourself, Chano. Uh, my name is Chiano Fernandini. What does he want to know? I am originally from Peru, South America. I started in masonry in the year 1990. Uh, in Peru, it's different costumes. That in here in USA, you have to be a year in a each degree. So it took me a year to become a fellow craft. I guess was 10 months to become a fellow craft and then another year to become a master mason. I became a master mason in the year 1993. Tell me about Freemasonry, John. Uh, Freemasonry, I can tell you, is uh, one of the ancient and most honorable fraternities in the world. Uh, we believe in the Father good of God and the brotherhood of men is a system that uh, teach you and practice values, moral virtues and uh, is projected to, to live in better society. What is a past master and are you one? I was a master of this lodge, Indiana Harbor Lodge 686 in the year 2014. It's a, like an honorary uh, title because it's nothing more higher than be a master, master of the lodge. Uh, no master of the lodge, I mean master in masonry because we got three degrees, as I told you before, the EA fellow craft and master. So the master is the highest. But when they assign you as a master of the loss, that means that you have to be in charge representing your loss for a year to conduct all the business. It's like a trusty uh, gift that the brethren gives to you. And, and if you have been elected, you, you can become a master of the loss. I was a master of the loss in the year 2014. To the question about St. John? Um, yeah. I'll ask you if you have something to say. Why is the lodge dedicated to St. John? Uh, um, in many years ago, the lodges were dedicated to King Salomon because he was uh, the first of our most excellent grandmasters, but in modern times to St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist, who were an eminent patrons of Masonry. Next question is discuss your Masonic journey. And you said some of that already. Do you have anything else to say about your Masonic journey? What, you recorded on that? <laughs> You want to talk about Peru and then coming here to Jersey and then coming here? Well, I, I can tell you about my journey in Masonry. It's a, as I told you, I am from Peru. I started in the year 1990, 1993. I became a Master Mason and that year I traveled to USA. That is the goodness of Masonry, that if you become a Mason, you can join any lodge in the world. So I came in to New York and joined a lodge in New Jersey, Little Falls Lodge 263. I was a, an officer for three years. I got three different offices in there in the, in the fraternity. And in the year 2007, I came into Indiana and I started my, my journey again in Indiana and I went through the whole church uh, as I told you before I became a master of the lodge in the year 2014. I would say that the, when you got the time and you got the 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 willingness to do uh, to practice uh, your journey your duties in masonry you can uh, find a time and a place to do it. What 
has masonry done for you as a man, an employee, and as a philosopher? Well, masonry, uh, as I told you before, is a system that uh, teaches you values, um, practice, you know, all the moral virtues, and it changes you as as a as a man. We we always got a slogan that it says masonry makes a good man better. That if you practice uh, these teachings uh, by lectures and symbols, um, you become better and better man. You become a better father, better friend, better friend, you know, and a better member of society and help your your community. What topics do you study in your free time? Well, in my leisure times as a mason, I, I like the part of the ritualistic work. I always uh, read about what I learn. Um, I practice because if you don't use it, you lose it. So I've been trying always to keep up on the world, you know. Is there any life experience, wisdom, you would like to impart to younger generations? Not just Masonic wisdom, but just anything. Well, uh, in life, uh, we are always uh, tasted, I guess, you know, uh, between the good and bad in the world. Um, when you join the fraternity, you are uh, gaining a bigger family because all the brothers are like your second family. So each brother becomes your relatives, your family, and the wisdom is in there, you know. You got a bigger family and anything happens in life, it becomes more easy to resolve when you are among brothers and friends. The wisdom that I, I, I gain in becoming a mason is that uh, when I was younger, I was thinking always that I believe in God. I heard many stories that masons are evil, whatever, you know, but I knew that that wasn't true, but one of the first things that they ask me is that you have to believe in a supreme being. In this case, it's God, you know, could be any God that you believe. You know, you name me, namely any, any way you want to, but I believe in God, my trust is in God, and the wisdom comes uh, from God. Could you describe your relationships and bonds with your old and younger brethren? Well, the, this, this time is like, a, we always say that the wisdom is in the old people because they live longer than us. When you are younger, you don't have any experience. You don't know many things about life. It, any problem that can arise in your life. Sometimes you feel deep in trouble and in here, in Masonry, you got that uh, that earning, you know, that you have people with experience and they impart you the wisdom to the youngest people. You're doing very well, you're doing good. So, so. <laughs> And we're, we're cruising along too, we're not spending too much time. If you yeah. want to talk longer, you can no, talk longer. No. What would you like to say to men wanting to petition a lot? Well, I would like to say that uh, if have you ever decide to become a mason, uh, have to become that, uh, that wishes, that willingness to, to become a mason in your heart. Uh, when you come into a loss without looking for anything like uh, uh, 
for the treasure because you see too much movies and you will, you were uh, you will be disappointed if you are thinking that your earnings in masonry are going to be in gold silver whatever you you are wrong so you don't have to take the step uh, if you like to be bound with good people to practice uh, charity to practice the values in life, uh, you will be in a good place and you have to take a step. I'd like you to answer this one if you can. So this is a long question. Admission into masonry is achievable to any man, yet is it, it's exclusive. So the structure of masonry can make a good man better, as you said. So will the quality of human life improve as the quantity, the amount of Freemasons rises in this country or around the world? Well, when you uh, believe in God and you believe in wisdom and you think about all things, uh, uh, we, we, we as Masons are a uh, among of people that uh, we impart in energy between us and that energy is of course uh, around the world and of course I think that uh, as we become more and more uh, extended in the world uh, the benefits are for us and from the people who are around us. So, so. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on going. What do you think this is the public's opinion? Do you have anything to say on the public's opinion on Freemasonry? To be honest, I don't have anything to say about the public's opinion because we are an institution that works by by some. They kill us like a, we are a like a private, uh, we got secrets, of course we got secrets like uh, every institution, you know, if you join the army, if you join another institution, they got some some secrets that they they are known only for the members of the, that that group. But uh, we, we don't have any big secrets, you know, we are not trying to, to take the war like uh, some people say. This is a question that I like a lot, just to uh, discuss kind of the trust between people outside and inside the fraternity. So Freemasonry's history is preserved internally through thorough documentation and trust amongst our brethren. So how can outsiders embrace and trust Masons while they're excluded from our fraternity? Well, uh, human beings have a uh complicated, you know. Uh, when you become a Mason, you, you have a, mostly like a hundred percent that the person who are treating with you is honest. And in these times it's very hard to find honest people in the world. As we know, you know, not criticizing the public, but it's hard to find uh, an honest people when you got something to say or you have any problem arising in your life, anywhere in the world you meet a brother and you can talk openly and you can trust in, in, in him. Can you talk about the history of the lodge at all, this Indian Harbor? Well, Indiana Harbor Lodge was chartered in the year 1912. In the year 2012, uh, we celebrated the 100 years. Uh, the master of the lodge at that point it was uh, worship for Brother Del Parlo. He passed away uh, last year in February. So uh, he got a cancer in his brain. He was a lovely boy, a good friend, and a good fellow of the fraternity. Do you 
you have any stories to tell, Masonic stories of history or personal Masonic stories? I can tell you, uh, when I became a Mason, I was living in, in the north part of Peru, and I got an uncle, my my godfather, that is my my mother's brother. He's a brother Mason, and he traveled to to north of Peru to be witness of my initiation into the fraternity. Uh, that was a very, very honorable for me, very significant. And after that, uh, uh, the next year, when when I became a fellow graph, uh, it was a, it's a ceremony I haven't seen here in USA, but it's like a recognition when you get married. I got a conjugal uh, recognition in the lodge. It's a, a special ceremony, and it was very good. <laughs> yeah, have you ever heard that? It's awesome, man. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm divorced, you know. But they, they, they set up the lodge, and it was like a, another way. All the all the all the all the temple was with flowers. They set up the the oil, the vinegar, you know, and that. The, and they do a, a ceremony like it. they recognize you as a, as as brothers and becoming a family of the Very very touchy, very nice man. Can you detect honesty, channel? Yeah, as I told you before, you know, uh, we we know as a Masons, as a human beings, that uh, the the truth is relative. You know, it's it's not a hundred percent truth. But uh, when you become a, a, a Mason and you are between your brothers, uh, you can feel the honesty in those people. This is an odd question. <clears throat> so if you may reiterate, like, just change the way I say this, let me know. Uh, so if you can comprehend the past, can you comprehend the future? Yeah, like if you if you can understand what happened in the past, do you think you can tell what will happen in the future or kind of predict what will happen in the future? Well, with the history of the war and the events that happened in the war, you have a, the the first stone. Let's go to say, you know, that uh, things can change for the better to to become a better world, better society, and that's one of the main. The uh, reason that uh, Freemasonry exists for all these years that to have a better society. Last question. You made it all da, 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 da. I don't know. Man. Da, da, da. <laughs> <clears throat> so what have you yet to learn? Well, you never you never finish learning, brothers. The life is eternity is school. You is no person that would say that I know everything, I know the answer for everything. Is you every day learn something different, something new. And what that is one of the goodness of the fraternity. I, I really love it, I really really like it because in my journey as a Mason I told you that I am a traveling man. I was initiated in Peru, I came into New York, I traveled to lawyers in Connecticut, in New Jersey, I came to Indiana, we go to Michigan, to everywhere, and anywhere you go, you will learn something now. Anything else you want to share? That's all the questions. Yeah, I really appreciate that you consider me to be in, in this video, and I hope to to don't bother you. <laughs> I think you did great. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Brother.
Nothing else you'd like to discuss at all? Anything off topic that's on top of your head? No, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, Chavo. Good job. Cut. Release. Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> How is that? 